Greetings, vinyl community, to my 2023 room tour video. Uh, I hope you enjoy what you're about to see coming up. Uh, there's, you know, a little bit of the same from last video a year ago, but there's a lot different, uh, despite what I said in my last video that this was the system I'm going to run with for the next while coming up. Of course, those were complete lies, and you never stop. Uh, chasing different equipment, which I'm excited to show you all. But uh, I thought right now, I'm going to try to make this video as concise as possible. So we're going to have some edits to move some lights around, make it uh, a little bit better for everyone to see. But right now, we're going to look at the room, the part of the room anyways, that has uh, changed the least. And that's this kind of front area here as you kind of walk in. There's, uh, well, the, C the CDs, I think are the same as from last year. Uh, this part right here, this is turned into some of my SACD, Blu-ray audio, DVD audio, you know, those kind of audio file CDs there. I thought I'd make a rack for that, so I'm not digging all the time for that kind of stuff. Uh, box sets, some of my, so you can see my selfie stick there, right there. Look at that. What a hipster I am. Uh, a lot of my CD box sets, I don't think that's all of them, but that's a lot of them. We got Ministry, Poppy itself, an 80s one, English Beat. What else we got? The Police, Ramones, Hawkwind, Sex Pistols, uh, what Beastie Boys, you know, some stuff. You know, there you go. A little bit of different stuff from last year. Right here, we got, I made a different rack for my jazz and blues CDs. Once again, so I'm not digging uh, through everything else, looking for uh, some jazz or blues when the uh, mood when the mood strikes me i guess so that's the part of the room that's kind of stayed the same you know it's a little bit of different box sets here and there but that the, the, the setup is mostly the same and then i'm going to spin around and i'm gonna have to move the light excuse me there we go so there's something here i want to show you but i'll i'll just run through the cds quickly these are my audio file cds that won't fit into that rack so some Roger Waters, some Yes over there, Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Buena Vista Social Club, all that stuff up there anyways. That's all the audio file CDs that wouldn't fit uh, in that one rack you just saw. And this is kind of, I don't know, I divide my CDs like I always say every year into genre. It's the way I worked in record stores, so it's what makes me uh, find things easier. This is by genre. So this would be kind of like my quote unquote 80s and you know kind of like gothy stuff like that the stuff i use for djing when i need to uh, rip some cds or use some cds but what we have here relates to a box that i'm going to show you when i go to the main stereo system i have two well actually the other one's right behind me but trust me this one there i've added two very high quality speakers in the back or in the rear as they call them uh, it sounded kind of weird, but uh, I got a speaker there, and how was that for a turnaround there? Let's get rid of this here, and I got a speaker here, and I've kind of, yes, they all, they're all working proper as a po I mean, what I'm saying, someone's going to say, make sure they're measured right, and blah, 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 you know, so I get maximum amount of uh, uh, audio enjoyment, but trust me, they're, they're, they're sounding pretty good already, but this is kind of... I found something over there I'm gonna show you in my main setup that allowed me to put two rear speakers here on a two channel system. And it's kind of changed the way I hear music right now. And it's amazing and it might not be amazing to you, but it's really kind of uh, changed a lot of things uh, how I'm listening to music right now. I'm gonna bend down and grab a drink. One second, please. All right, so I might as well just continue with this here. Uh, this is a lot different from last year. Anything from here on is probably a, a lot different from last year. So I got my two rear speakers, my little uh, isolation platforms there. Actually, they're not isolation platforms. They are shelving units from Ikea. So, shh. But I've got my seven inch singles here now. I've kind of moved them up here and I have labeled them. As you can see, finally, I got around to labeling them. So... There's quite a few, as you can see up there. It's packed and stacked, and that's most of my seven-inch singles. And I added this because this guy, I just thought it looked neat. But 
I do sample some seven inch singles on this little machine. I actually have two of these. The other one was uh, a lot neater to look at, but this is more practical uh, just to sample seven inch singles when I need to pull them for DJing or whatever, just to, just for fun. It's here, but I got a little, little, you know, I found this at a thrift store. So I'm, if my audio sucks, I apologize. I should be changing the uh, direction of the microphone. My apologies. But uh, it's just, you know, it's just a little bit of fun. And what I do is I'm not using these front speakers. I uh, added a, uh, what you don't see behind there is one of those sound bar thingies I got from a thrift store as well. So it sounds pretty cool. But it's just for sampling stuff uh, for seven inch singles. And it's just for fun. And, it, you know, to me, it kind of adds a little bit to the room. You might disagree, but once again, this is my room. And I, I think it, it looks kind of neat. All right, so what you have here, and I'm gonna see if I can twist this without breaking it off, is, uh, how about that for now? Uh, what you got here, once again, I, uh, I've added dividers this year. As you can see there, I found a record store locally that uh, sold me a whole whack of these cards. And I, I love them. It's kind of uh, made things a lot easier to find, as you can see. Yeah, so I have it broken up by genre. Uh, in the other music room, you're going to see that it's divided up by uh, alphabetically, but I don't think there's enough here. Well, actually, I didn't think I had enough cards to break it up alph alphabetically in this room here, but that's not here nor there. But this is kind of like my... Um, I have my progressive rock, my prog rock, and my psych uh all mixed into together it makes the most sense for me personally to find stuff so i okay, see so if you hear any rattling it's just this uh this was here last year too my recumbent uh bicycle helps me exercise for my bad back but if you hear any rattling that's me kicking that damn thing so progressive rock psych uh and then in the bottom here we've got uh some jazz and blues so jazz and blues that's kind of like it makes like i said once again it makes the most sense to kind of bung those together um yeah there you go so I'm, i don't really think there's much more to say to that that uh that's what this is anyways just to show you and i'm doing this all in i'm going to try to do this mostly in one or two takes so uh if i'm mumbling that's going to stay in the video this year i'm not going to do any editing i'm going to just make this as as uh, smooth as possible for everyone. So this is, uh, like I showed you earlier, or a few seconds ago, this is metal and I guess hard rock. So I hate to I hate to argue with people what's metal and what's not metal. So uh, I just put metal, hard rock. And I don't even know why, because I'm the only one looking at it. So I could have just put metal. But anyways, that's, you know, you, I would put Van Halen here, but some people might argue they're not metal, blah, 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 blah. But it just makes sense. Once again, it makes more sense just to have it all together here. So this is all my metal. Over here, and then uh, this is my my metal seven-inch single. Sorry, I'm kind of uh, sneaking by the couch here. That's my Fonzie. That's a beautiful story about the Fonzie there. But anyways, uh, I'll, I think I've told that story before. But that's the uh, angle from here. Seven-inch singles. I'm gonna try to move over here. So metal would kind of metal and hard rock would kind of take up that rack there and this rack here and then uh punk is down here as well once again it kind of just makes more sense to have the punk after the metal and then what do we have here this is kind of a weird one and only i would know the uh the reason or the the, the, the where's and why's of why things are here but i i just called it goth industrial electronic so it's kind of like you know the dark 80s like Bauhaus but then it's kind of like industrial like early cabaret Voltaire uh, but then it's also like some electronic music like uh, I even have Daft Punk in here because it's well it's electronic but I also have like uh, trying to think of something like Lords of Acid would be here uh, the old electronic band and then what's down here down here on this bottom shelf is what is that now? Oh yeah, this is all, no, I'm a liar. Cause it's, <laughs> sorry, this is all 
Uh, oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. I just did this. This is funk and R&B here. I don't know if you can see that. I, that's a recent addition. I really hate digging through my stuff for uh, for funk and R&B because that's a real bitch to find mixed in with all my other stuff. What's this? Here? I can't remember what this is here. Ah, Maybe I'll have a look when I have to do a pause here. But that is, um, that's this part of the room. I swore to myself I wasn't going to use a lot of ums and ahs, but here you go. I can't help myself. So that's that for now. And I'm going to move over here, sliding by the couch. And I'm going to show you, because this year I've added a couch. Let me get rid of this duster, because I was dusting before I turned, uh, I turned on. So yeah, I've added a nice couch for my listening pleasure and my laptop, so I can work on my laptop there. All stuff you probably don't care about, but that's what it is. Uh, that is my Fender Stratocaster. It's a pawn shop edition. I can't remember what year it is, 2000 something or other, but more or less it's a hybrid Telecaster and a Stratocaster that came out uh, under the pawn shop series. It's pretty cool. I love the big headstock. That's one of the main reasons I got it, the big headstock. Uh, how about I turn this light on here? There we go. I love the kind of buttercream color so it's got the telecaster pickup and then it's got you know your uh humbucker in the bridge area there you go and then with that comes my uh crate amplifier oh randall sorry randall crate it's a randall amplifier that i did i got from a thrift store as well and it's in perfect condition i'm trying to trade that right now for something a little bit more uh for, i'm trying to get a fender 2 by 12 for that anyways once again that's not here nor there and then uh, my personal hero, Captain Sensible. Uh, that was a nice gift from someone. And that's it. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to, I am actually going to take a pause here, and I'm going to come back, and we're going to look at the main system and the side music room. Hang on for one second if this works. Okay, we're back to the other side of the room now. I don't think that was the smoothest of transitions, but you know what? That's what we're going to roll with this year. Okay, so I showed you my little couch and, uh, that I've added, my coffee table, computer. Uh, okay, I've added this, a TV I picked up from a thrift store. Uh, and why did I put a TV here? Did I really need one there? Well, yeah, here is the problem, is that I play a lot of Blu-ray audios and DVD audios, things like that, that require you to have a a menu to select screens, to select bonus audio, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're doing it without a monitor, it is very difficult. So I added this so I can actually see what I'm playing. And it actually looks kind of cool because sometimes I can just put visuals on while I'm listening to music in the dark here and it kind of adds a little kind of cool vibe. So that's what's playing right now, just for demonstration purposes, is King Crimson in the core of the Crimson King is the uh, DVD audio for that one. And then, what are we going to look at now? I'm going to just go over here now. Uh, this is kind of, things are going to, going to get a little bit weird here. I might add a light here. Just give me one second here. I have a light here in case I need to. Uh... There we go. This might help out here. I'll carry the light. How about that? Uh, I've added, uh, what is this? This is one of those hybrid DVD video, uh, DVD VHS players. Uh, because I found a whack of my old uh, recorded well, video cassettes, VHS cassettes from when I was a kid that I recorded off MTV, and I just think it's a blast to play them. I also got lots of uh, some bootleg DVDs, uh, lots of classic MTV, uh, like eight hour, each DVD might be an eight hour block of MTV or something. It's just nice to play in the background. Uh, what's this here? Okay, these are Miles Davis earbuds that I bought off our local buy and sell forms. Uh, brand new in the box, they're worth a ton, and I don't know what she asked me, 20 bucks for them. So I'll never use them, but I guess they sell for a pretty penny in Japan still, I guess. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, my headphones, which I used to keep closer to the stereo, but they kept on causing problems, so I have them set up here. I've added shelving units, as you can see which I didn't have last year. I think, I don't know what I had here last year. Probably one of my record shelves I had here, but I found this. This is one of the earliest 
uh, seven inch record players that RCA Victor made. Uh, and there's the original instruction sheet that came with it. This came from a, a, a farm not too far out of my city here and it works. Uh, and that, that these are essentially uh, record changers and you put the records in the red part and they fell down one by one and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the seven inch single started with one of these machines by RCA Victor and they were made to compete against uh, the 33 and a third RPM vinyl. But there's other videos on the interwebs that describe that a lot better than I probably could. And then up here, I just, I don't know what I'll do with this shelf, but right now I've added, here's Joey, who might always stay here. Ramon singles box set, the Suede singles box set that came out when the first album came out. Uh, Sex Pistols, that was Record Store Day. Your Ramones was Record Store Day. The Suede was just vintage when it came out. And then I got a T my T-Rex box set, which I had last time. Uh, Kiss box set, a very early Conor McGregor Edmonton Oiler card, which yay, Oilers. Uh -huh. And then I got the David Bowie Space Oddity 50th anniversary 7-inch box set, which I've yet to open and I don't think I really need to. It's just, maybe I will. I don't want to be one of those guys that keep things uh, sealed, but for now, it's uh, it's staying sealed for now. You know, I'll never sell it, so I don't know why it's sealed. A lot of people keep sealed stuff so they could, you know, flip it or something like that, but I don't, th I don't think I'm really that guy. Maybe I am. Uh, I've added a plant. And, you know, and from, from the couch area, it just adds a little bit of a different a different view. You know, I don't know why, but it just seemed kind of, uh, I don't know, relaxing. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm getting old and uh, uh, maybe I'm turning a bit hippie-ish. But back there now, and this is what I have to figure out too, but that's my Depeche Mode Songs of Faith and Devotion poster, original poster. That's a bit covered up now, but I'll figure out the wall space. There's my piggy bank, which I do use still. And then I had two shelves here, one behind the plant. Well, they were here before the plant, but it just didn't quite work out. It was a pain in the ass to, to and I'll show you what was in the second rack uh, in a bit. But piggy bank, and, and yes, these are all A tracks, except for those things right there. See those black spines there? Well, that's going to play into something I'm going to show you into my stereo coming up, which is a big difference from last year. I think, I don't think I had it last year. If I did, I'm a goddamn forgetful liar, but we're going to show it to you anyways. So then we got, uh, what, mini discs. I really love my mini discs. Uh, like I said, eight tracks. I do have quad eight tracks, which uh, really play into uh, those rear speakers now and a box that uh, I'm going to show you coming up. So that is this side of the room. I'm going to flip around really quick. If I can do this here, I'm going to go this way. Do, 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 do. Thank God my stabilizer's on. Give me a second. I'm going to get this light out of my feet. Okay. I had all my, well, I used to have upwards of a hundred Walkmans. I used to collect. And then in my old house, I had like one of those Ikea, I don't know if it was Ikea. Yeah, it was Ikea glass shelving units that were tall. It was kind of tall and had shelf, you know, I had my Walkmans in there and it just looked stupid after a while. I don't know, stupid. I just got bored of looking at them that way. And then I ended up selling a lot of my Walkmans off. So um, what I've done is I've kept my working ones and some of the ones uh, I did keep that weren't working, I kept for practice to uh, work on them because a lot of really nice vintage Walkmans, all they are is just, people say they're broken, but it just needs a belt. So I've had a few Walkmans that I've uh, that I kept that were broken that I've just kind of taught myself how to change the belts and they're a real pain in the ass. So if you ever think of wanting to change a belt of a Walkman, have patience because they are a right pain and you know what okay so anyways i decided to keep a lot of this stuff uh some there's some new additions as i keep on finding really nice walkmans at thrift stores but up here is just you know yeah it's my sony watchman doesn't work obviously because we don't have uh any stations that work with those anymore you know i got some panasonics which are actually they rival sony for quality sanyo's a beautiful sharp one from japan which i need a power pack for i will show this right now this is a, what, what model is this? I can't remember the model. I should, 
post that because it's missing the power bank on the bottom, which is proprietary. And if I could get one of those, uh, I would be a happy, happy man. The Metallica little setup that was, I think, across behind me last year. Mm, I, I hate sport Walkmans, but this one's a little bit different looking from the typical yellow ones. And it works. I fixed it. Uh, an old Optimus one from Radio Shack, which is actually really good, I hate to say. Iowa is some of my best ones as well. This is a recent uh, thrift store find, this one here. It records, but obviously I'm not going to use that, but it's professional Walkman and the playback is really great. Uh, this is a really great Iowa as well. Um, what else we got here? These are a lot of my Sonys. Back there in the wooden box, that's a Pono. Remember Neil Young's Pono? Well, that's a Pono, and it's uh, next to brand new in the box. And one of these days, I'm going to have to get it up and working and download some high-res files and see what, what the Pono experience is all about. Uh, some of my Sony Walkmans, I have my favorites. These are my mini disc players that I actually do use, portable ones. That's a Sharp. That's a Sony. And right here is the much sought-after first-ever mini disc player. Look how big it is. Fuck me. That's massive. Um, what originally what Sony promised before they released the first Walkman was something like that. What they came out was this beast. And to find this you or uh, to find this working still is very rare. And this one is brand new. Uh, I don't know if it's been used. I have the box elsewhere with all the literature and I pulled it out just because it's kind of neat to look at if you're into mini discs. Once again, that's my Randall amp that I, I, I just, I got it from a thrift store. Uh, the camel thing is not really my thing. So I'm going to try to trade that off. These are records that I've bought that I've not listened to. So what I've done is I've made, I bought a box uh, once again from a thrift store. And these are records to be listened to. And I don't listen to anything else until I've been making my way through my new vinyl that I haven't listened to. Although this front one I did listen to last night, Los Bichos. I love them. That's one of my favorite new bands, Los Bichos. Of course, you need a big muff that isn't hooked up at the moment. Uh, a classic vinyl carrying case that I've kind of used to house a lot of my vinyl, my valuable vinyl, but now it holds all my uh, inner sleeves, outer sleeves, things like that. And that's it for this side of the room. And that's it for, uh, let's see here. That's it. We're going to go to the main event right away, which is my stereo setup. One second. All right, we're back with what uh, might be called the main event for a lot of people is the my actual stereo setup. Uh, it could be a lot simpler than what it is, but then it wouldn't be as fun, I guess. There's two ways of thinking at it, I guess, is that, you you know, sometimes you just it's easier just to have a pure signal going from one to one, and that's it. But uh, I like dabbling with sound, so there's a lot of interesting things in my setup this year, uh, which I'll show you coming up now. Uh, I think last year when I did this, I had a Techniques 1200 Mark II, I believe. Uh, I don't know. I haven't watched back my video, but I think that's what I had last year when I made my last video last year. But I've traded that. I traded that because uh, the fully manual turntables, it's just hard. Like I use them for DJing at clubs, and that's one thing. They're built for that. But home, without any kind of automatic shutoff, you know, you fall asleep, you have to go upstairs because, you know, something's boiling or something, something, something. And then it just continues spinning on, on the record. And I find that really annoying. And I'll be honest with you, 12, Techniques 1200 turntables, they're fantastic, but I don't, they're not the greatest home turntables. That's my belief. And that's what I'm going to stick with. But having tried it for a year, I, I, like I said, I'd rather keep it just to, uh, um, club use anyways so i got this new old stock uh i'm sorry but if you're at sound that's one of my machines doing a little shuffle there uh i found this i what did i have to trade for this i had i had a piece of equipment oh i had a i had a Marant, uh vintage amplifier which people always in my area they will pay big dollar but i found one i traded actually i traded for one and I don't need another uh, receiver, although I do, I do love the Morans, but it's not what I wanted to use this year. So I, I put an ad in and I said, I'll trade for any kind of vintage turntable. And I ended up getting this brand new in the box. It's new old stock. And that a lot of people call this the rock because it's made from a resin. This is the KD 
2055 from Kenwood. And I can't remember what year this is. It must be late seventies, early eighties. I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm wrong there, everyone, but, uh, a lot of people love these turntables just because it's made of a resin. Um, and it's very, very heavy. So I couldn't say no to this brand new in the box. I've never opened a vintage turntable, uh, from new old stock. And I can't remember where this guy got it from. It might've been from auction or something like that. And I opened, I couldn't believe him in the box. Um, and I'll try not to repeat that because I've said that three times now. But anyways, uh, that's what I'm using for a turntable this year is, uh, and I have another one that uh, I had a Denon one just before I got this one, which I'm still going to swap in and out of my mix here, but that's all tucked away right now. Um, I got that. What is that? DL30, I think it is. I could be totally wrong as well. But that's my turntable I'm using right now. It's uh, it's very... It's very simple to use actually, but it's 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 not the best turn, turn, turntable I've ever had, and I've probably had about fifteen since I well since I was young. Uh, main turntables, I'm talking. Uh, I've had a lot come in and out, in and out of my life, but um, this is not the best. It's up. It's it's really good. It's a it's good. It's solid. It's not the best, but you know what? It's just it's really easy to use. It's kind of. Uh, it's kind of neat. It's just kind of neat. That's all it is. And there you go. That's the turntable I'm using this year. And I have a, I, I don't want to pronounce that. I always get shit for mispronouncing this turn, this cartridge, but you know, the MP 110, which I'm still running and I still like what we got here. And I cannot remember. I think, I think last year I wrote down model numbers and I didn't this year. Uh, I don't know who's interested in model numbers but if if anyone is uh what i'll do is in the notes or in the uh um what do you call it in the stuff down below down below the screen i will put uh the model numbers of everything i'm showing you if you so desire so anyways i have a sony blu-ray player here and that's to play blu-ray audio i also play my dvd audio from here as well and uh that's been a nice solid unit i think it's an sac it's an, it's also an sacd player but i don't need it for that function because i have one coming up over there this is my yamaha mini disc player uh which is japanese and i, I have behind my shelving unit here i have a power uh transformer whatever you want to call it inverter whatever voltage uh whatever so i can run it from japanese power to north american power but uh, that's that's the same from last year as my mini disc player is the yamaha one from japan I have this realistic uh, eight-track player, which I might have had last year. I, I probably did actually. But the cool thing about this one is it has Dolby uh, noise reduction. I have not recorded on this thing yet, and I probably should just to try it out. I have brand new tapes, uh, eight-track tapes I've bought uh, off local ads just to try it out. But it's got nice VU meters here, and it, everything works perfectly. And I, in fact, I opened it up not that long ago just to give it a good cleaning, and everything was working really well. Uh, the heads were aligning properly for the tracks. And it, it was just, uh, it's just fun. It's all, it's all just fun. I mean, do I need it? No. But it's just fun sometimes to play different formats. Uh, this is the same preamp I've been using for a few years now as the Mies. Sorry if it's uh, autofocus. There we go. Uh, once again, what is that? This is the P, I think it's the P50, uh, which was recommended to me by a hi-fi shop. Uh, it's, a, it's a good... It's not quite budget, but it's not super expensive. It's in that middle zone there, but it's a really good preamp. I'm pretty happy with that. Record brush. Don't need to see that. I'm going to save the boxes. I want to show you that's made a difference for the rear speakers. I'll probably show that last. But what we got here is uh, my reel to reel player, which I had last year. And that's a Pioneer. I love this reel to reel player. Uh, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. That's all I got to say about it. Uh, I have this little rack here to show what I'm playing. Take photos for Instagram and shit like that. But uh, that's the new David Bowie, Divine Symmetry reissue. Okay, so I got a DBX 200X, which is more or less a control. I know DBX is mostly known for their noise reduction. This is more or less a switch box to switch. Uh, I love DBX units. I found this one for next to nothing. And it is, this allows you to switch back and forth between units, and it's a DBX, so it's solid. This is my DBX 
222, which I do use. Um, it's mostly a noise reduction system, but I just use it to play anything DBX vinyl. Uh, I don't really use the noise reduction a whole lot because I have other things for that right now. This is new. Uh, so there, that's new there. I had that last year. Uh, and I added a different CD player and I added it. Why did I add a five disc player? Um, I'm not exactly into uh, those CD changers that play multiple discs. I usually like one drawer and that's it. But I find when I'm recording from CD to, let's say, reel to reel to mini disc to DAT or whatever, it just helps if I put five discs in and uh, make a playlist and it just kind of goes on its own instead of having to pause. And because on the reel to reel, you can hear a pause. Sometimes if you don't do it right, you can hear a click or something like that when you, so anyways, it's not really uh, uh, my cup of tea is having that, those little noises between songs. So I added a five disc player, which I found once again at a thrift store with a remote. One second, I'm gonna have a drink. All right. So that's why I added a five disc player is like I said, I'm not really a fan of them, but uh, it, it does help for recording. Uh, this is my Sansui RG710. I do remember that. Uh, I just mostly, I have two of these units, but one has a bigger screen, but I love that. Um, that pulses to the music. Currently, it's just it's just used to show this off. I don't have it plugged in. I don't have it set so where it's affecting the sound. Um, I might. It's been like that for most of the time I've I've had this system. Um, but I might put that into the unit again as a, um, I don't know. Because I have something else that does that as well, which I'll show you in a bit. But that's my equalizer. And then back here, I hope, I don't know sure if I had this last year, but it's an LCAS player. It's a Sony EL4. And I hope people might know what, a, what an uh, Elkis, what did I call it? It's an Elkis head player. I might have called it something stupid, but this is a very, very, very rare unit. And I found one up in northern Alberta, and the lady was able to bring it down to me, which I found fantastic. But if you don't know what these things are, this was a kind of a Sony's attempt at combining uh, audio cassettes, as we know them, with reel to reel to get reel to reel sound. Um, let's see here. And if I can do this with one hand, there you go. So this is an Elka set. I didn't do that right so you could see it, but that's an Elka set. I wish I had a cassette with me to show the, time, the difference. Um, give me one second here. Do I have one? I don't think I do, but give me one second here. Uh, no, I don't have one in reach. So anyways, uh, these are these are pretty big tapes. They're not quite VHS size. They're more beta size, I guess, which makes sense because it's Sony, but that was their attempt to combine reel to reel with the lowly audio cassette. So uh, I was so happy to find one of these. It's so rare. And the cool thing is, is that it came with, do I have them here? Oh yeah, those black things. It came with all these brand new L cassettes. And these L cassettes alone sell for a ton of money on eBay. Just cassette, to find cassettes is amazing. But she gave me all those and I have more of them. There's some top there above them. I have some here. That I'm, I was recording with but yeah very very happy to have this like i said I, I really love having lots of options and lots of kind of vintage audio which is very obsolete but that's why i have an alcasa player and i just think it's fantastic and you know what it actually sounds really really good uh and it's, it's probably for the best it didn't take off because it's kind of a really clunky format the size of it but that's my power conditioner is my monster power hts 1600 which keeps everything at a very very smooth 120 which is exactly what you want north american power to be at it keeps everything clean it takes a lot of the hiss away from the system i, I highly recommend these uh don't pay a ton of money i see these at thrift stores every now and again and i just kind of waited out for a, i had a different one last year i think uh that i got from a thrift store and i waited for a new one and this was almost brand new so it works excellent. Like I said, it takes away a lot of the hiss. It, um, it's just a really good system to keep everything at a very, very clean uh, uh, 100, 120 voltages. 
I can't remember. I just woke up, by the way. Uh, if you if you if you haven't noticed, so what else I got here? That's some real to real cassette tape cases for that. Uh, let me just move my seat over here. This is the same as last year. I really love this amp, and I have a theory about amps which I would love to share, but it would very very much piss a lot of people off. It's about vintage versus new, but that's you know everyone. I want to say I want to say this right off the top. Well, it's not off the top. This is kind of in the middle. Right right off the middle, I want to tell you that uh, uh, everyone's ears are different. I've said this before. So a lot of people have really, their hearing is much in tune to, let's say, a vintage amp. And a lot of people, their ears are more in tune with kind of a modern day amp. So a lot of modern day amps can do things that vintage ones couldn't do and vice versa. So, but you know what? I'm running a new... Uh, this new amp which i've had for two years now it's the pma 600 ne and it has a the thing i love about it it's got outputs more way more outputs than uh and you know inputs outputs um that uh i guess inputs is what i'm looking for uh so i can plug more things into it but uh then a, then a vintage amp so i love that about it and it sounds really good as well so that's what i'm running uh and i've had that for a couple of years now and i still i'm still using it i still love it this is my SACD player, and I have a awesome Moran's one that I still haven't been able to get repaired. Uh, that's that SACD player is just amazing, and this one's good too as well. Uh, is a super, like I said, I'm really into SACD Super Audio CDs. I love them. I play them all the time. Uh, the sounds, it, the sound you get is amazing. So that's what I'm using for an SACD player right now. It's a Denon uh, SACD player, and then I have a Tascam D8. 20 uh dat player which this came out of a studio i believe i think i had this last year let's see if i have one in there right now yep there you go there you go it's kind of the very opposite of the elk cassette isn't it those these little dats but these sound i mean as a lot of people know, a lot of people would record albums and then put them onto DATs and, and then give them to uh, mastering houses so they would master off of a, a DAT. Uh, that's how good the sound is. So let's put that back. There you go. I don't want to play anything right now, so let's hang on here. Yeah, I should, probably should lubricate that. But it works perfect. Okay, so right here... Uh, I have my DBX228. Um, this is used for cassettes. Um, I, I sometimes use it, so I sometimes don't. Like I said, sometimes I think it's sometimes you can have a little bit too much audio filtering. Um, I, I was kind of experimenting with it as a noise reduction system, to, you know, for the hiss of cassettes and things like that. So I might sell off a couple of my DBX units because it is kind of excessive, but. Anyways, I have a, these are some of the top quality cassette decks I've ever heard. And no, they're not Nakamichi, but I I don't want a Nakamichi. I love these Tascam ones that were used in recording studios. I have a uh, 122MK3, uh, which is uh, Dolby B&C HX Pro. You know, all those lovely, lovely things. And it's... Uh, direct drive and these are some of the best cassette decks i've ever ever heard i love vu meters but these are amazing and then i have a tascam 112 uh, mk which was the model before uh, this is a switch box by the way just for between uh tape based formats i have uh so yeah i have uh this is a direct drive. This is belt. I fixed this one and I was, I couldn't believe I fixed it, but I did fix it. I bought it and it wasn't working properly. And the guy said, well, you know what? Just if you can fix it, good, keep it. And here's your money back. So I was uh, equally thrilled and equally kind of fearful of permanently breaking it, but I was able to fix it. So those are my cassette decks here. But what you're about to see in the next room after I'm done, my main system is going to blow your mind is my cassette um, collection. And I probably should save it for another video, but I may or may not show it to you. It's 
I'm getting insane. And I know a lot of people don't like cassettes, but I do. And, um, yeah, and I need to stop buying cassette player decks. Anyways, here we go. This is, uh, this is a DBX 118. And if you want to see what these do to vinyl, there are, there's video, there's videos on YouTube showing you what these do. And it's utterly amazing. The sound that, what it does to vinyl, uh, you got a dynamic range enhancer here. You can change the sound of, uh, you can give it more of a wide, a wide sound stage, or you can kind of make it a little bit more uh, condensed. Uh, I'm kind of describing it a bit weird, but trust me, um, the threshold, how high you want that. And this isn't the main box I was telling you about that's changing the way I'm listening to stuff, but this has become a vital part of my system is this DBX 118. I love it. And it, uh, makes my vinyl sound really, really sweet. But this thing, I found this about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. It's a realistic QV3. And it's from Radio Shack, but it's quite well thought of. I've, I looked on, um, well, I looked on YouTube, I looked at things on, online about it. And it's one of the rare, proprietary, incredible things that Radio Shack ever did. In my opinion, it allows you to turn your um, your two channel system into a four channel quad system. Now, I don't use the quad function very often. I do if I'm I'm do if I'm playing uh, quad albums or quad eight tracks or something like that. But there's the rear speaker level. There's the blend. You can blend the sound between the front and the rear. Uh, this is to play quad right here, as you can see. Hope it focuses on that. So quadravox, and then you got or just Stereo, but the stereo you still get four channel sound, um, and it just it, what it does really in, is that it just fills up it fills out the sound. I'm starting to have some hearing loss issues, um, but it it very it helps. Let's just say it helps me a lot fill in a lot of the sounds um, that I might not be getting right now. But it's amazing, and I added those two. I mean, I had those two rear speakers sitting around with nothing. I couldn't do anything with them because I didn't. I found them at a thrift store, and I really had no use for them. But right, like I said, right now when I'm sitting on my couch and I'm getting the sound, uh, even the, like the quad works amazing. You know, I'm playing quad stuff. Like I played a quad Black Sabbath, Paranoid, and it sounded amazing. But um, it, uh, it, like I said, it, on stereo, it just fills in the sound. Uh, and you, you can hear things that, that are coming from the rear that you're hearing might not hear from the front. It's one of those things that you have to kind of experience um, to hear what it does. Anyways, like I said, it makes the sound a lot more uh, round and fills in a lot of the a lot of the space like, right now. And if you're starting to have a little bit of hearing loss, uh, it just makes a massive difference. So how about I hold the camera proper so you can see it? But that's what it is, and I, I just love it. And this was brand new in the box at a thrift store as well for like eight fifty, and just amazing. So that is my main system here. I'm going to get up and kind of walk back and get an overview of it, so you can see what I am listening to when I'm sitting down here. I have a sub right there, by the way. That. Uh, I didn't show you, but it's a really nice sub, but uh, I'm not going to dig back there and show it to you. Oh, yeah, my speakers. A lot of people ask me what my speakers are. They're Tenoy, and I can't remember the model number, but they're from uh, uh, UK. They're UK made. Um, they're very, very high or well thought of speakers or the Tenoy brand in general. But I've had these for a couple of years now, and I love them, and I don't have any plans on changing them right now. And I don't need to for this size of room. It's... Uh, very nice sounding speakers, probably the best ones I've ever heard uh, that I've owned anyways. I'm not saying the best ones ever, but the best ones I've I've owned. So that's the system right there. Oh, sorry if you hear a clud there on the microphone. And it's a lot to take in. I do realize that it's a lot of stuff in there. So, but, you know, I'm happy with it and it allows me to play different stuff. It allows me to you know, just be a kid again and play with uh, stuff I've not seen before because when I find a, a new or different audio unit that I've not had before, it's like, you, you do feel like a kid if you're into audio and it, it's just really fun to play with it. And sometimes it'll stay in the system and it'll be something you hang on to. And sometimes 
It isn't. And then you'll just kind of pass it along to whoever wants to buy it. But you know what? That's it for that. We're going to go into this room right here behind the drape in one second. We are behind the curtain. Like it's the U.S. versus the Soviet Union, mid-80s, behind the curtain. This is my music room. Uh, it's essentially the same as last year, but there's a lot of different stuff in it. So uh, I'll take you through it right now. These are my vinyl box sets. The things up front are the newest ones I've, I've uh, been able to get for the most part. Uh, I'll show you my box sets really quickly because a lot of people always want to see my box sets. A lot of people have, that's probably my most requested video that I've never made is people want me to look at, uh, show about my box sets for whatever reason. This one you might have seen on a, uh, on a, one of my, my uh, what are they called now? Vinyl Finds videos. Uh, it's the only video I make, so you think I would remember the title of them. But on one of my Vinyl Finds, this came from a local, I can't remember, was it Buy and Sell? I don't remember now, but it's like, this is new, came out within 2022. It's like a hundred bucks on Amazon right now, but I got it for, I can't remember how much I got it for, 20 bucks, maybe. Uh, but it's the Alphaville Forever Young box set. It's a uh, vinyl and it's got all the CDs inside of it. And I, I like the album a lot, so I couldn't believe I found that. Uh, replacements box set. I want to say thank you to the person who acquired that for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's all the Sayer Years albums. So uh, I think there's a separate Twin Tone uh, box set for all their uh, Twin Tone early stuff, like Let It Be and all that stuff like that. But this is uh, this contains one of my favorite albums ever, Please to Meet Me. There we go. Uh, Jane's Addiction box set. I can't believe I found this online uh, through one of our local buy and sell things, I think it was. Um, on top of going uh, slightly losing my hearing, uh, I th I, my memory seems to be going as well. So I think this is a byproduct of age. But uh, I can't remember where I got this now. It was a local, it was, I bought this locally anyways um, from a lady who, who's, um, I can't remember if I told this story in one of my Vinyl Finds videos, but her brother passed away in a car accident, I believe it was. And she was uh, begrudgingly selling off some of his stuff. And um, I offered her a price on it and she gave it to me. And uh, it was really sad, but... It's going to, she was actually very happy it was going to a good home. But this is all the Jane's Addiction records, plus it has Kettle Whistle, which is a lot of the rarities. And what else does it have on it? Uh, it has a live album, Live at the Palladium. And it's out of print, obviously, and it's, it goes for a, a, a pretty penny. But I need to take this off to show you this. This is the uh, Mobile Fidelity One Step Pressing of Thriller. And it is from the actual, I know a lot of people are down on mobile fidelity right now for their use of uh, digital files, which doesn't bug me in the slightest. I mean, a lot, a lot of new albums are sourced from uh, digital sources, but that's just the way it is. A lot of original master tapes are not usable at the moment, or they're not able to fly overseas to wherever they're being made in the U.S. or England. So they use digital files. And I don't, it doesn't really bother me, but this is from the analog, original analog and you can see the one-step process right here. If you're gonna focus, it's the analog master. And then it's a very, very quick system and it takes out a lot of the middle uh, steps that they take to make vinyl. And I do have to say this is, uh, why I don't know, I got this because I love Thriller. I have since I was a kid. And I make no apologies for that. Uh, it's the best sounding copy of Thriller I've ever heard. And I've had, uh, Japanese master sound copies. I've had all kinds of copies of this record and you just, it's amazing sounding, let's put it that way. And you hear this album in a whole different light by hearing this copy right now. And it's right now, for some reason, it's like 60 bucks cheaper on Amazon Canada than it is when I bought it. So that kind of pisses me off, but whatever case are off. Uh, this is the UHQR version of uh, Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced from Analog Productions? I have two Analog Production box sets currently, and I don't know where the other one is. Oh, it's behind this mess here. Uh, well, it's not really a mess, but uh, yeah, this is very similar to the uh, One Step Michael Jackson system, but it's done by Analog Productions at Quality Pressings, 
I think they're in Kansas actually. But once again, the packaging here is just absolutely amazing. It's got one of those beautiful spines. Sorry if it's blurring on you there. And it's very similar to the one step uh, and, or the system they use anyways. And like I said, it's the best sounding copy uh, I've ever heard. And like I said, like Michael Jackson, I've had all kinds of pressings of this record. And it, it's I have an original really nice copy and it's better than that. So, but like I said, everyone's ears are different. That's my opinion only. Please don't argue it because it's my opinion. I will listen to your opinion. But that's what I feel about it anyways. This is the Dream Theater, and it's still in the shrink, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, like the replacements, this came from Anthony at AGK Vinyl during one of our vinyl auctions. I bought this. It's uh, Distant Memories Live in London box set, 4LP and 3CD box set. So, sorry about the glare there. This isn't new. This is I've had this since uh, it came out, but... I've had the pleasure because I worked in the music industry for so long, for two decades, that I got a lot of access to backstage. Uh, and I've had met a lot of my favorite bands ever. And so I've been lucky enough to get a lot of autograph things. And uh, this is the Death Magnetic Coffin box set. And it was autographed by the whole band in 2008. I believe that's Kurt Hammett there. There you go. And James Hetfield, also 08. Anyways, there you go. That's the Metallica box set. You might have seen that before. Uh, was this? Uh, this is my uh, Smithereens. Uh, I think this was the only way to get it on vinyl was a date with the Smithereens, which was their first record for RCA after leaving Capitol. Very good record, and it didn't do a whole lot. So, unfortunately, but it's a really, really great album. I'm a massive fan of the Smithereens. Uh, I may or may not at the end show you the box sets, the rest behind here. Uh, that way you can kind of turn it off if that's not really your thing. Uh, let's see. It's got its own temperature thing here. And light. Anyways, uh, like I said, I got cards this year. Maybe I'll turn this on for lights here. Hang on. I don't know how much light it's going to add. It might. It might not. But this is for at night when I'm pulling vinyl. It does actually... Uh, project a bit of light so I can see things going on. But that's how I caught Pop Rock A to B. That's how I got the cards all all uh, done. As you can see that. And it makes a massive difference. And uh, the record store that sold me these, I owe them a massive favor. But they, that's my, uh, what is this? This is all what I would call, as the card says, my Pop Rock stuff. And three shelving units here i'm gonna try to back up so you can kind of get there's gonna be people who watch this who've never seen my videos before so i i gotta stop assuming that you kind of seen this before but that's all my pop rock stuff currently i want to say also i also have about 15 u-haul boxes of vinyl uh which i won't show you which i've shown in previous videos but that's stuff that i've kind of uh parked for buying or record fairs i guess is what i'm looking for but anyways that's that pop rock all very 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 treasured and awesome things in these racks here i'm gonna grab a drink it's very early in the morning and i don't know if i'm not quite awake yet but i'm sorry if i'm mumbling everyone i'm trying i'm trying not to okay so I'm not sure you probably if I probably panned around so you saw my cassettes, but I'm going to touch on that in a second. Uh, more records. This is uh, let's see, that's mostly Depeche Mode, and uh, that's Duran Duran vinyl all put together. These are my 12 inch singles. I used to have two or three shelving units of 12 inch singles, but I have thinned them out quite well a lot because I I used to use a lot of them for DJing, and I don't really need. 12 inch singles a whole lot anymore for DJing um unfortunately we're kind of I've been doing my 80s night vocally for the last 12 years which is longer than the 80s ever ran but they're getting just they're getting more popular and more popular and I can't believe the 80s just won't die but I'm finding that using vinyl when you have a full crowd of a thousand people or something like that it's just not in, conducive uh 
to playing vinyl with the floor bouncing and we've tried everything but it's sometimes you get the odd oops which i don't like to see or like don't like to have at a at a 80s night so we're kind of transitioning away from vinyl um which is fine things move on so that's what that all is there there's my dj case that i is about 600 pounds that i haul for djing which i don't really much anymore uh, a lot of my kind of 80s movies, I used to have them all separated because we used to play them in screens when I, we had our 80s at a different venue. They wanted to play 80s movies behind us. Um, so I kind of still keep them like that. Uh, I have a subscription, my only ever subscription I've ever had uh, to, this is for Classic Pop Magazine. Let's see if I can close this here and show it to you. That's every every edition of Classic Pop Magazine, which I've had a subscription since it started. And every time Christmas comes around, I just ask for a renewed subscription. And I've been getting that for a gift every year. So that's my favorite magazine. Uh, the only magazine I really read anymore. And this is my much talked about, if you've seen my videos before, my favorite singles of all time. Uh, I'm done. It's completed. Uh, I've promised a video now for two years for this. And I'm afraid if I do it, no one's going to watch it. But I might do it just for posterity. You know, when I'm dead and gone, people I know will see what I've owned or what the, my favorite singles or songs are of all time. So we're going to move around uh, to cassettes. And I've been lucky enough to... I'm going to use the word I hate, a crew. A lot of uh, sealed blank cassettes for recording. I have metal cassettes. I have ferrochromium cassettes. I have all kinds of cassettes here. Mostly these are all type 2, type 3 metal or ferrochromium. I don't really like to do uh, type 1 cassettes, but there are some here. Uh, a lot of sealed, well, most of them are sealed. Sealed A-tracks. But those are my cassettes. And there's a lot of new ones. I've been buying a lot of the new cassettes. And like I said, this is, like I said, what, what's here? Like Neil Young's Barn record. I bought on cassettes. Uh, I had another one here I wanted to show you. Like David Bowie's Toy, which I actually haven't even opened yet. I should. But that was off his website. But that, you know, new cassette for that. Um, because honestly... Uh, I know there's a lot of people going to argue with me, but if you have the right cassette player and you have the right cassette and you have the right setup, cassettes sound just as good, or they can sound just as good. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say better, but as a CD. And a lot of people have heard my system don't believe that I'm playing a cassette, but I am. But, you know, metal. I'll show you this because a lot of people might care. But you might want to pause this if you're a metal head to see what I got there. And there. And then metal and some more rock stuff. And then some more cassettes there. And then I have more cassettes over to my right, which I'll show you once I get over there. Um, this is all my extra equipment. And I know last year it was a lot, there was a lot more in here. And I don't think it was as organized as it is now. But oh actually, you know, I'll show you this now. Right now, these speakers, these uh edifier, edifier. I think, they're I think it's called Edifier. These speakers sell on Amazon right now for $300. And they're brand new. And I bought them at a thrift store for. So I'm going to sell these once I get a cord that I need for them. But thrift stores, amazing. Amazing what I find there. So, And these are insanely good bookshelf speakers, but I don't need any. These are all cassettes too. There's three briefcases and one of these I keep for um, various. That one's all full of various cassettes that I like to play. Extra equipment. Oh my goodness. I love this player. I found this this in 2022. It's one of those really mini cassette players. I've seen videos of these on, Am on Amazon, on YouTube. And they just seem so cool. They're, so, they're all compacted into one unit. This is from Radio Shack, and it uh, and it honestly sounds great. I, I can't believe how good this one sounds. So I was happy to find that. Uh, what's that? That's a S. That's a DVD SACD player. That is uh, my cassette 
to mini disk system. I do use this one. I just don't have a place in my system for it right now. But when I want to record onto mini disk, for the most part, I use this. And it'll record a disk in four times speed and, uh, to mini disk. And I've been using that a lot. It works really well. That's my switch box, which I want to get fixed. That's one I've had for years. And the RCA plugs in the back have come loose and I got to fix that. So that's there for now. This is a Kenwood. What is this now? Why do I have this? Oh, it's a receiver I got for, um, you wouldn't believe this, but this was on, I'm going to bend down here. This is on our, on our local community. In our community, there's a Facebook page for pe people giving things away. And this was on there. It was dusty as hell. I opened it up, cleaned it all up, but it's a Kenwood um, ProLogic surround sound receiver, which I don't need, but it was free. So I thought, well, I'm going to keep it until I find someone who needs it. So uh, this is a Toshiba quad amp that I got at a thrift store a few months ago. And now I don't need it because I have another way of listening to quad, as you uh, saw earlier. But this must be early 70s, I'm guessing. It's an SA500. Works perfectly, but I got to do something with that because I don't need it anymore. This one, I'm never selling. This is the only vintage amp that I will hang on to. It's from Sharp, and at a certain point, Sharp uh, wanted to, uh, you know what I'm going to do? One second here. I'm going to grab my drink over here. I'm keeping it real. No fancy edits from this guy. Okay. I traded for this. This is a sharp op. I can't even pronounce it again. Opt Opnoptica. <laughs> God, am I fucking that up? It's early in the morning. It's an SA4141 receiver. And a, a certain point, Sharp wanted to get into the audio file game. So they made a, uh, they had a very, very high quality line called this. Optonica. That's what it is. Optonica. Oh my God. A We've had a breakthrough and I've recorded it. Optonica. This is, I've had Moran's amps, uh, receivers, sorry. Uh, I've had all kinds of beautiful vintage receivers and this is the best one I've ever heard. And if I ever go back to vintage, receiver um this is the one uh what is it oh sorry about that it's got so much stuff it's got a power protection there uh you can listen to obviously speakers different in different configurations uh as you can see it's got so many different little functions and it's just an amazing receiver i like I said, when Sharp decided to go into the kind of high-end audio game, they really, uh, and the, the person I got this from, they have a matching turntable, which I I didn't need, but it was it was a really good turntable. But I kept the receiver, and like I said, it's wood panel. It's just, it's a beautiful receiver all around, and I don't know even know what it's worth, but it doesn't really matter to me because I just love it so much. So I will keep that. This is, uh, I finally found someone to fix these in, in Calgary, down south. Uh, these are digital compact cassette players or DCC players. I've had these for the last couple of years and it, they kind of work, but like all DCC players, they were all made by the same manufacturer, the, the internals, and they all have leaky, the same leaky uh, capacitors. So most DCC players are dead or DOA, and I finally found someone, I can't find anyone locally to even attempt to fix this even though there's step-by-step -step instructions on youtube i found a guy in calgary who's going to do this uh um, what i might do is my get i might i have two of these i don't need to i'm going to i might give him one if he fixes mine so i'm going to give him probably the phillips one and i'm going to keep the techniques so yeah, i have two digital compact cassette players they are worth quite a bit but i want to use them because i have cassettes for these so those are my digital compact cassettes. And then I have a Sony cassette deck I'm working on right now at the moment, which is a kind of a simple fix, but I just, I, I need to take a break from fixing stuff at the moment. Now, um, you know, I'll show you this coming up and then I'll show you, like I said, the cassette decks, cause you can always uh, flip that off if you don't want to see that. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, metal, this is all metal CDs. And I've slowly been 
reducing the size that I have. Um, the amount of metal cassettes I've been trading a lot because metal CDs in my area, they, are, they go for a premium. People collect them and uh, they still command top dollar. Or if you're trading, they're the most desirable things people want in trades. My area, that's what it is, metal. It's a metal rock town. But some metal box sets. They're not, this is a Judas Priest one. Maybe I'll, hang on. I think there's a cartridge for my Denon uh, turntable, which I have not shown you. It's all boxed up. This is a Judas Priest singles box set. And it's got all their singles on CD format, which is beautiful. Uh, what else I got there? Motorhead box set. Which is, I've had this for about 12 years, 14 years, whatever it is. It's beautiful. My Blue Oyster Cult box set, which I got for Christmas a few years ago, which I am in love with. Black Sabbath one, which is great. Death Angel uh, box set. Queensryche. I got a few Queensryche box sets. This is all their albums in one box plus a bonus disc. Operation Mind Crime box set. Empire box set. This is what this is Paul Stanley's audio book for his. Um, or his autobiography, which is actually amazing. It's probably the best of all the Kiss books that have come out. Judas Priest box set, which contains all their CDs up until, I believe, Painkiller. I just got this at a thrift store for $4.99, but it's the AC, ACDC Backtracks box set. People never give up on thrift stores. I'm still finding some amazing stuff there. Uh, this tin contains a lot of, like, uh, replacement screws and stuff I need for my repairs I do for on, on audio equipment, nothing major, but it's an, it's a final frontier tin that came out for Iron Maiden when that final frontier album came out. Came, I think there was a CD in there and some other shit. I found this at a thrift store and it's been invaluable. This is a Sony, uh, HE2 head to magnetizer for cassette decks for, um, reel to reel, anything tape based. I found it new in the box, old stock, and it works amazing. What's behind here? This is uh, my cartridge cleaner. Would you, uh, I think Anthony from uh, AGK Vinyl has this as well. Maybe a different brand. but It works amazing. One day I'll show how it works, but it really does clean your cart, your stylus really well, actually. Uh, what else are here? I got, uh, I like, I like buying these from thrift stores. I always find vintage, um, cleaning thing out of buying them for the boxes but this is a what is this thing a sound guard record buffer cleaner and then this is an audio technica vintage this is old uh it was at6015 this is all vinyl cleaning i got that from uk a prince double cassette box which doesn't fit into my rack here this i've bought recently it's a radio shack head to magnetizer same as the sony but it's just a different one. You, it takes a like a, it takes a battery, and then uh, you, you press play, and the head contacts the uh, the magnet, and it's supposed to get all the metal gunk off your heads. I've not used it yet. I just got this. We'll try it out soon. Uh, another cassette cleaner. This is a vintage one in the box. I I found and I, I use it. It works quite nicely. And then what have we got back here? Uh, we got more cassettes. This is more, I don't know what this is, 80s alternative stuff. You know, I'll do this and you can kind of pause it if you want to look and see what I got. But there's some new cassettes here. Like I, I got this Stranger Things cassette from the, that's the new Stranger Things uh, album. And then there's some other, there's a lot of other new stuff here too. Like the new minist the new ministry record on cassette. Sounds, it just actually sounds amazing. Ah, things like that. So anyways, that's that. And then more cassettes down here. And I think that's it for cassettes that I that I know about. I could be wrong. Uh, what else I got here? This is all my cleaning products, like my spin clean. And I bought one of those vacuum cleaners. And I have not talked about it. So I, did, I wanted to try it out before I give an opinion on it. But it's one of those ones that um, is a very high quality one. That attacks you, uh, attaches to your shop vac. And... There's the platter I made to spin it around while it's cleaning. And uh, the jury is still out on that one. So I got to use it a few more times before I... That's that box there, by the way, with the, with the Canadian flag on it. And that's the bottle you use to spray in the vinyl, blah, blah, blah. But um, I'll probably give an opinion of it and show it in, a, in an upcoming video. 
and give an honest opinion. Then I got, uh, this is a boom box I bring onto the, uh, onto the patio deck in the summertime and play cassettes where you're enjoying the weather, having a drink. And these are all, these are all things coming up for auction things coming up. If, uh, we have, I think we are having another auction, but that's the stuff I've pulled for it. Same as that. Uh, you know, there you go. That's that. And then is there anything else to show you before I spin it around for cassette decks? I was going to make a different video for cassette decks and I still might. Um, but for you all, I'll show you. Oh yeah. And at the, at the end, I'll show box sets as well. So this is my cassette deck collection. Cassette deck. Sorry. Uh, I think I'm mumbling. I'm getting to the point where I'm tired and mumbling. Uh, a really nice Sony deck. I found this one recently, this TX. I love single deck players apart from double decks, but they're harder to find. But I love the single cassette decks. There's less internals to, to go wrong. It, is there, it's a really nice TX one. Same as the Sony one. This Sony is a really, really nice one. Uh, I love, this is a really, really good sounding deck and it's a three head deck so you can monitor while you're recording. Um, yeah. Really nice deck. Kenwood. Uh, I just found this one. I don't know why I bought it, but you know, just, just to try it out. Uh, this is a really nice techniques deep one with D, uh, DBX encoding. Really, really nice deck. Uh, Sony. This is a keeper for me. It has Dolby S the rare, rare Dolby S which came out at the tail end of uh, Dolby or cassette decks. And it's, uh, most people know, know Dolby B and C, but there was a Dolby S noise reduction system that absolutely works amazing. So this is a keeper deck for me. And it also does auto calibrate right there, auto calibrate, which you press and it, it, uh, it records a little snippet of a sound. It has, it plays a sound and it plays it back. So it determines, um, internally what the best recording level is for your cassette. Uh, another Tascam. I have, th I have three Tascam. This one needs to have the belt fixed, which I am going to be doing soon. So I have three Tascams and I love them. They're just amazing sounding decks. My favorite decks. This one I bought recently because it looks really weird. It's a TOA AR71. And then I bought it and I found out it's in mono and it's more for background music maybe or for the, i can't remember what it's for but i don't the guy lied to me and said it was for uh it was in his studio it, it there's no way it was in his studio on mono but that's what that is really nice yamaha deck i mean a lot of these are going to be sold off by the way so don't think i'm keeping these because some people might say well you can't how do you listen to all these well i don't but i buy them i try them out and there's keepers and there's things that i'm keeping because i just they, they, they might have a different function on them they look neat this is another keeper is this, oh, I haven't showed this one. This is another keeper that has Dolby S as well. Finding Dolby S decks is a rarity. And this has something called auto BLE, which works really nice and blah, 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 blah. There's Mike Nesmith. Uh, and it's anyway, the techniques is a keeper. That's a keeper. And the Kenwood I just bought recently. And it's just a, a good, as it has its own proprietary noise reduction system. And I bought it just to try it out. Because I could, you find these, I've almost, I think I found almost all of these at thrift stores or online ads for dirt cheap. Cause I don't pay full price for things. I just don't. This is my Iron Maiden Eddie box set. Ha the, the eyes light up, but I have to, I'm just, I got to replace the batteries for them, but that's the, I don't know if I can open this here without causing a riot. There's all the CDs for Iron Maiden. Um, these lays were from my sister's, um, memorial. I had a sister who passed away not that long ago. And she wanted to have a Hawaiian themed um, service and because Hawaii was her favorite place on earth. And so we had a Hawaiian theme a little get together for her. And you know what? I'll, I might leave the box sets for a different time. So if, if you guys want to see a box set video, let me know. But that's it for this room and that's it for this video. So I want to say thank you to everyone who's made it this long. Um, I'm very, very happy with my system right now, the way it looks. I got uh, the couch is really comfy to sit, listen to vinyl. The two rear speakers just ma make a massive difference for me uh, for, uh, for obvious reasons. But there you go. 
I'm going to bid you adieu from Naz Nomad, a.k.a. Naz Nomad, David Michael. Uh, have a great, great day. Have a, whatever, whenever you're watching this, have a great day. Take care of each other and stay safe, everyone. Take care.